And now to that controversial medical case in California, 13-year-old Jahai McMath goes in for a routine tonsillectomy, and now she's being called brain dead. Her outraged family is demanding that their daughter remain on life support and have taken their fight to court. It is a fight they may very well lose. Joining us now is author and bioethicist Art Kaplan, who often grapples with the difficult issues between the medical and ethical world. And also joining us by phone is Dr. Nile Shah, who is a neurologist and a founding member of the New York State Neurological Society. Welcome to both of you to Arise America. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Dr. Shaw, Thank I'd you. like to start with you, if you don't mind. Let's just start with some, some basics. What is the medical definition of brain dead? Uh, very simply put, it's when the brain no longer has any active function that can help make the body do things that it normally would do. For example, the brain controls your breathing. It controls a number of functions, simple things such as moving your arm, moving your leg, consciousness. All of these things arise from the brain, and if the brain's activity no longer can support that, then we consider somebody brain dead. And I'm assuming that that is measured by what is known as an EEG, an EEG is that correct, an electroencephalogram? Correct. That's uh an actual measure, a very sensitive measure of the brainwave activity. We look at the electricity generated by the brain, and looking at the waves, if they are there, then we assume that at least there's some activity. In the case of brain death, we do an extra highly sensitive EEG looking for any activity, and usually the case is that activity has disappeared, <clears throat> unfortunately. Okay, I want to bring uh, Art into this conversation here. This is a very, very heart-rending and difficult situation here. Uh, what, the, the, the family believes that there's hope. Right. And I would imagine they believe that there's hope because we in the news have reported these fantastical, miraculous Recoveries. cases where somebody's been in a coma for years and years and years and they wake up, so they're still holding out hope. So where is the, the burden for the doctor here, the medical community, in terms of balancing the family's desires and what they understand to be the truth according to medicine? Well, great question. Brain dead is dead. It's not a coma. Nobody comes back from it. Once you pronounce it, that's it. But because of these terrible, tragic circumstances, they're trying to be polite to the family. They're trying to say, your young daughter came in for an elective tonsillectomy and she's dead. We've got to give you time to accept that. You know, they could have pulled off the life support without any discussion with the family. And that's my question for both of you. Art, I'll start with you. Does the, does the doctor or the hospital have any legal obligation <clears throat> to honor the family's wishes? They don't. So when you're dead, we have a rule, it's ironclad, we don't treat the dead. We talk about machines like life support, but it's a little misnomer. They're artificially maintaining things at this point, but if you're dead, you're dead, they don't have to talk to a judge, they don't have to talk to the family, they can say, we're gonna stop treatment. Dr. Shaw, does that agree with your experience and, and, and how you were taught? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and the way we work it is, if there's ever any question or emotion or family intervention, then we bring in a second physician to look at the situation and independently check for brain death. And then on that basis, if we have two, two physicians separated by 24 hours making this uh, diagnosis of death, then there really is no question. Uh, it's just a courtesy to the family after that uh, so that last-minute family members can fly in. Uh, it's more for their emotions that they're, they're seeing somebody before they're quote-unquote dead. But really, once the brain is dead, uh, there is really no coming back. And let me just take a little bit of a left turn here. What possibly, and I know I'm asking you to speculate, you are not uh, Jahai's uh, doctor. I, I'm assuming you've not seen her file, but what are the possibilities, uh, the differentials, if you will, that could have gone wrong to put this child in brain death after a tonsillectomy? Sure, well, unfortunately, anytime you have any operative procedure, you can have bleeding. And with massive bleeding, then the brain gets deprived of oxygen. It gets deprived of blood and the oxygen that's transported in it. And then it does not have the energy to continue moving and continue, uh, continue uh, functioning, as it were. So that's the simplest cause. It's simply just a, a bleeding out from some wound somewhere that had gone unnoticed or had been not stopped in time. And most likely that's what happened here. Art, in this case, how is this case different than someone that's in a coma or a particularly a vegetative state? <clears throat> we remember, <clears throat> excuse me, Terry Schiavo. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> she was in a vegetative state. Part of her brain was still working. She wasn't dead. 
She could grimace, she could digest food, maintain her temperature. A brain dead person can't do any of those things. Mm -hmm. Think of it like a TV set, the picture's on, something's flawed on that picture, that's a coma. Unplugged, that's brain death. That's brain death. And Dr. Shaw, in, in this case, is there any chance, is there any chance, because doctors, I'm a veterinarian, I'm a doctor, I understand medicine, is there any chance that the doctors could be wrong? Because I'm wondering if that's what the, the family is holding on to, that every once in a while the medical community gets it wrong. Absolutely. Doctors are humans after all, and we do make mistakes. But that's why we have this testing in place where you have independent testing from several different sources. And it's unlikely that this testing is wrong repeatedly over and over again. So as much as we hope for a Christmas miracle, it just doesn't happen. Yeah, it's just ter it's a terribly tragic case so all the way around. Dr. Nile Shah, thank you so much for taking some time with us. Art Kaplan, it's great to see you. Thanks Hi, for coming in. I appreciate it. And this is Arise America.